Hello and welcome to Automate File Cleanup. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I recently received the following question. I download an Excel file every week and make changes like deleting columns, counting and adding rows and so on. Can I automate this repetitive task? And I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Exercise one. We're gonna use Power Query to automate our file cleanup. And if you haven't played with Power Query before, this is gonna be a nice little intro. The first step is to go to data, Get data from file from Excel workbook. In the import data dialog, we select our data file and click import. In the resulting navigator dialog, we select the desired worksheet. Then we click transform data. This opens the Power Query editor. Now, Power Query can do many different kinds of file cleanup tasks or transformations. In this short video, I'm gonna focus on the ones we need to answer the question. So the first transformation was on deleting columns. It's very easy to delete columns in Power Query. One option is to simply select the column and then use the delete key on your keyboard. Now, if I wanna undo that, I can click the X in the Applied Steps list box. Another way to delete columns is simply select the column head to home and then remove columns. And basically, as we create these transformations, each step is being added to the applied steps list box. This is the list of steps that's gonna happen every time we click refresh from within Excel. With our basic transformations complete, it's time to send this back to Excel. To do so, I'm gonna to go to close and load two. In the resulting import data dialog, we have many options. In this case, I'm gonna go with table, existing worksheet, and I'm gonna pick a cell and then I'm gonna click OK. At this point, Power Query went to the external Excel file, navigated to the specific worksheet, and then performed that transformation of removing a column. Now let's talk about the additional question which was on counting and adding rows. One option for doing this is to simply head to the Table Design ribbon tab and click Total Row. This adds a total row at the bottom of the table. It's easy to change these totals. For example, if I also wanted to count the number of rows in the results, I can select any of these total row cells, use the drop down, and pick Count. If I wanted to change this, I could use the drop down and pick any other aggregate function. In this case though, I'll stick with sum. And another option for counting and adding would be to use a pivot table. And if you haven't played with pivot tables, check out my pivot table for beginners video. And with Power Query set up, it's really easy to refresh in future periods. So let's talk about that next. Exercise two. Now it happens the following week when we have another Excel file to import. Well, one option is to simply replace the original source file. In other words, we would put the new file in the same folder and use the same file name as before. If we did that, all we need to do is click data, refresh all. But another option is to simply change the source file path. To do that, we can double click the query in the queries and connections pane. And by the way, it's easy to toggle that pane on or off simply go to data, queries and connections, and we can toggle that on or off as desired. In any event, we double click to edit. This opens the Power Query editor. On the source step, we can click the gear icon. Now we can simply click browse. Here, we can pick the updated file. Click OK and then close and load. And as we can see, the table results are updated. But what happens if the file structure changes like there's new or renamed columns? Let's tackle that in the next exercise. Exercise three, let's update our data source to data three. Double click the query, use the gear icon on the source step, click browse, select our file and click import. Click okay, click close and load. Now we get an error. It looks like a column name has been changed. Let's click OK and let's double click the query to edit it. And what we can do in Power Query is we can select every step in the Applied Steps list box to see the data at that point. Let's click Navigation. That looks good. Let's click Promoted Headers. That looks good. Let's click Change Type and this is where we get the error. So let's go back to Promoted Headers. Originally, this column was called Check Num. In the new file, it's called Check. So when we look at Change Type, we see the old name check num is listed. We have a couple of options. One option is we can simply change this to the new column name if we wanted to, and that would be fine. Another option is just to redo this step. So I can remove this change type step by clicking the X and click delete. And with that error gone, I could technically close and load and update my Excel file. However, I wanna walk through data types. Currently, all the columns are set to ABC123, and that just means any data type. If I wanted to, I could take the time to specifically identify each data type. For example, this would be whole number. This would be text and so on. And in practice, we would definitely wanna review those. But I can also have Excel analyze these. Let me remove this step, change type. I start by selecting the columns I want Excel to analyze. In this case, I'll select check, I'll scroll to the right, I'll hold the shift key down, and I'll pick the last column. Then I'll go to transform, 
and then I'll select detect data type. And now Power Query analyzes the data in each column and picks the most appropriate data type. We can still change those if we want to. In our case, it looks fine. So now we'll go with home, close and load. And as we can see, the query results load fine now. We'll also know that the two additional columns came in just fine. In addition, our total row is still working, sort of. Here, we can use a text label total just to make it more clear. Also, if we wanted to reposition the columns, we can do that easily. Let's go back and edit the query, scroll to the right, and I'm gonna click and drag department num, and I'm gonna click and drag department. Now I'll close and load. And our table results are updated accordingly. So that's how we can use Power Query to automate these types of file cleaning tasks, including deleting columns and counting and adding rows. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my Pivot Table for Beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a Pivot Table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of Pivot Tables. This video is a production of Excel University.